Things have been a little quiet on the Rapidnadion channel since our winter adventures with ice boating and submarine-fired missiles, but that doesn't mean our shipyards have been sitting idle. We've taken a break from sinking model titanics this season and devoted our resources to a project that's bigger. Much bigger. Back in 2010, we made a video called RC Aircraft Carrier Launches RC Airplane using a scratch-built 51-inch aircraft carrier model and a fairly oversized airplane. The video was a hit, but viewers kept asking us to land the plane back on the carrier. Well, the problem was that the small aircraft we were using didn't offer fine enough flight control to land on such a small target. The solution was bigger, more controllable airplanes, and that meant they needed a much larger flight deck to land on. In short, we needed a bigger boat. Presenting our new replica of the USS Kitty Hawk, which when it's completed, will be the largest model we've ever scratch built. When it leaves the shipyard, the new CV-63 will measure over 13 feet in length, with a maximum beam of over 3 feet and a total displacement of around 250 pounds. It will launch and recover RC aircraft of several types and sizes. This is video one of two documenting the construction of this behemoth as it stands in May of 2013. After design work and calculations to determine scale, displacement, and other factors, the new CV-63 started life as a stack of three sheets of plywood in January 2013. The thickest of the three was sawed in half to provide enough material to form the ship's 3 8 inch thick bottom. Then, a 1 by 6 section of pine was cut for the vessel's chines, the areas where the bottom meets the sides, and one of the yard's many adhesives was used to secure the chines to the bottom, with weight provided by large car batteries. Around this time, the propellers also arrived in the shipyard, and early test fitting proceeded with pencils standing in for the propeller shafts. The transom, the ship's aftmost portion, was cut from a piece of 7 8 inch mahogany and affixed to the bottom, while the main transverse bulkhead was cut from spruce and bolted together with galvanized steel wing nuts to provide strength amidships. Other bulkheads were integrated further aft at this point, and early flight deck fit testing was performed with a piece of plexiglass. As more bulkheads were cut from construction plywood and added over the following days, the hull began taking on the familiar aircraft carrier shape, and that effect was multiplied by the addition of the shear. Reinforcing beams were added at points between the chine and the shear to rigidize the structure and provide additional points for hull plating attachment. Also at this point, the pass-through for the aft hangar bay was constructed. Just like on the real deal, it's a hole right through the ship. The 3 16 inch sides were attached by glue to the underlying rib structure and were clamped in place to dry overnight. These sides extended only for the aft two-thirds of the vessel, as the bow plating required special sculpting. A portion of the older CV-63 was used for early planning of the new flight deck at this point. It provides a reminder of the scale we're dealing with with the new ship. At the bow, the hull strakes numbered 10 on each side, varying from 2 inches to less than an inch. The twist in the hull topography at this point necessitated extensive clamping and some creative thinking. The initial bow design proved too angular, so it was augmented with additional wood spacers, along with three laminations of 1 64th inch plywood with gaps filled with polyester resin, thickener, and bondo. The bow was then sanded down to provide the more rounded curve we sought. A mahogany skeg was then added at the ship's centerline, and cardboard rudder mock-ups gave way to the real article, cut from quarter-inch plexiglass. A coat of primer was applied at this point, and a foundation for the future flight deck was cut from 3 16th inch plywood. It would later be discarded due to warping, but it, along with some more measurements of the existing carrier, provided a good idea of what hull extensions needed to be built to support the flight deck. Up forward, those hull extensions took the form of 3 16th inch ribs over which more hull sheeting was laid, whereas back aft, the hull add-ons were constructed from sections of beveled spruce. The overall result is a much beamier vessel near the flight deck level, more closely approximating the actual ship than the previous carrier model. Stock photos of the real Kitty Hawk indicated more hull detail was needed before painting could begin, so additional plantons were fashioned for the hull areas adjacent to the hangar openings and elevators. Painting then commenced, with haze gray applied above the waterline and a dark red below, the boot top between a flat black. The same black paint was also applied to simulate other hull openings and various details, providing the first early indications of scale on the model, alongside the hawse pipes, portholes, and anchors up forward. Just as the wheel collars were soldered onto the rudder arms, the steering system arrived, a high-tech mega-sail servo normally used for trimming on RC sailboats. 
The servo was mounted to a mahogany block, which was then affixed to the transom, and the X-shaped servo horn was connected via linkages to the rudder arms, ultimately connecting to the twin rudder posts. The motors also arrived about the same time. Four Johnson HC970 electric motors, which the shipyard tested at providing a no-load speed of over 3,300 RPM at 12 volts. Propeller shaft threading and installation commenced as drivetrain options were considered. Two inboard shafts were supported aft via a single strut passing through the skeg, while the outboard shafts were serviced by single hull-mounted struts. All are made of brass. The propellers themselves, 2.5-inch diameter brass screws, were affixed to the shafts soon after. Additional inboard vertical shaft struts are planned for a future build phase. Work continues on the new CV-63 in preparation for a summer 2013 launch and filming period. As this video hits the feeds, attention is currently focused on island construction, water discharge details, instrumentation, and other build elements prior to flight deck fabrication. Stay tuned to Rapidnadion here on YouTube at rapidnadion.com and on Facebook and Twitter so you don't miss future updates on the construction of our largest ever scale model. If you want to see the new videos right when they go up, subscribe to our channel. And, as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.